The vast majority of people in North America and the Western world at large are now living in a state of complete and total pre-programming. We see images like the one on your screen, and we envision something like, well, that's got to be the year 2700, 2800. It's no time in the near future, but many have speculated that this might be a utopia we should be aiming for. Well, what if I told you this image on your screen is actually representative of a country bluegrass song from the 1980s? Florida Maki, you have lost your mind. There are many things that I think of when I see these incredibly futuristic structures and flying vehicles, but the one thing I don't think of is country music or bluegrass music, especially from that far back. What are you talking about? Well, I'm going to prove it to you. There is imagery right here represented that virtually mimics the exact lyrics of an incredibly popular country bluegrass song from a long time ago. And the people who recorded the song were from a background that would absolutely shock you. Now stay tuned. This is going to be one of those Battlefield of the Mind videos where people are like, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. I know this. I know that. I think this. What if I told you that perhaps you were feeling, believing that you were thinking? You see, that's the holy grail of PSYOPs. It's not just to get people to think what you want. It's getting people to react emotionally while personally believing that they are actually in a state of thought. This is something we talk about at the Florida Maki Patreon channel, where it's only one, only one single U.S. dollar per video, no, per month, access, full and complete, unfettered access for one U.S. dollar per month, and even less if you sign up for an entire year, even less than a dollar a month, fully refundable, by the way, if it's not for you, you have 90 days to go over there, peruse through hundreds of videos, never before seen on YouTube. And if it's not for you after 90 days, you can get a full refund of all $3 that you would have spent over that 90 days. There is a very small cadre of videos over there for the $5 level. I will warn you, they are not for the faint-hearted. They are not for the emotional. I've had people sign up over there at the $5 level and go in and like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you're this, 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 and call me a bunch of names, ask for a refund. That's fine. That's fine. They did miss the primary focus of the videos, but that's okay. It's not for everybody. God bless all of you who have signed up. Let's get to it. Three minutes in. Now, real quick. It is very strange to my mind that the media, the mainstream media at large, is far more focused now on something that happened a week ago in a debate between two very elderly men than they are about this story. I mean, it's probably number two, number three, maybe number four in the list of things uh, most talked about, but it should be number one. Category four, category five-ish hurricanes spinning up in June right off the bat, forming literally overnight. It went from a tropical depression to a cat four in literally five seconds. Absolutely blasted through the, uh, the outer islands and... Because it's passing south of Jamaica, when it hits Mexico, it's going to be absolutely epic, the amount of destructive force it's going to hit with, because it's going to stay over open water. Now, one of the uh, the best things you can get from trackthetropics.com is this microwave track. For some reason, the you can follow this from all the way back before it hit the Antilles and follow it all the way through the Caribbean. And track it all the way up to literally the minute right now when it's passing the eye wall, what appears to be passing just to the south of Jamaica. It's one of my favorite looks because it gives you the long-term track. Now, of course, as always, track the tropics, just like it sounds, T-R-A-C-K-T-H-E-T-R-O-P-I-C-S, trackthetropics.com, full donation website. It is the uh, one-stop shop for anything you would want to know about any storm in the Caribbean, Western Hemisphere, 
spaghetti models, so many different levels of imagery and tracks, nothing missing here. Um, my favorite by far place to go. But I'd like to talk about the one specific island because it's relevant. A little place called Martinique. Now, so many islands down there. So many islands down there are virtually paradise. You have to wonder, back in the 1500s when people left France and Spain and England to some extent and Italy, Portugal and came in ships and landed here, they must have thought they had reached some biblical paradise. Flowers everywhere, palm trees, sandy beaches, lagoons and inlets full of easy-to-access fish, freshwater springs inland. They might have thought, well, gosh, you know, we came here to explore and go back and f tell what we had found. But my God, we could live here. We could never go back. This is absolute beauty. This is this is the island of, of Martinique. And some might say, okay, we're six minutes in, Maki. You better get to this because I'm getting a little bored right now. Just stick with me. Martinique, island in uh, the Lesser Antilles. Um, the real big one kind of on the, uh, let's see real quick here. Here's Dominica, St. Lucia, Martinique. The uh, hurricane passed right through here. So even Martinique itself got some of the outer bands and... Strangely enough, it is somewhat erroneously reported that Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House spokesperson, is Haitian. Her parents are Haitian, but she was born on Martinique. She was born on Martinique and lived there until she was five and then moved to New York. Now, some might ask... What's going on with this? Why are we talking about this? This is somebody we politically disagree with. It kind of dovetails. I was looking up some interesting history on here after watching the press conference today. How many of you be would believe me if I told you she was Gen X? That she was 50 years old. Florida Maki, no way. Absolutely no way. She's young millennial. She's almost Gen Z. She's not. I was absolutely floored when I saw that this woman was born in 1974. Truly. 50 years old. 50 years old. It explains a great deal. But she's, what if I also told you that she was raised Pentecostal? Now that might absolutely floor a much larger group of people especially those of you who are familiar with Pentecostals and Baptists. But Florida Maki, can, can, you get, can you stay on the subject? Yeah. You see, it was a room full of Pentecostals and Baptists that got together in 1989 and recorded a song that mimics this. That is virtually, you could take the lyrics right out of the song and point two pictures that you see in front of you right now. How many of you remember the song Turn of the Century by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band? The, uh, There'll be flying boats, condos with moats, cultivated oceans, floating cities in the sky, living underneath our bubble, no more toil and trouble. Singing about that sweet old by and by. Flying boats. Condos with moats. Cultivated oceans, floating cities in the sky. It was a room full of people talking about pragmatic utopianism. Talking about pragmatic utopianism. Now, great story, Maki. What does this have to do with Karine Jean-Pierre? One of her huge influences, the one that she actually attributes to her even being in politics, is a woman named Esther Fuchs. Wrote Mayors and Money, Fiscal Policy in New York and Chicago. And she describes herself as a pragmatic utopian. Which is a very, very odd thing. Because that's how you could have easily described 
the folks that were sitting in that room way back in 1989 recording the album, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? John Prine, Earl Scruggs, Merle Travis, Doc Watson, Roy Acuff, Johnny Cash, Mother Maybell. I mean, these are, even legends call these people legends. These are the legends of the legends. Emmy Lou Harris. It was a song written by the guys from the band, from the Nitty Dirt Band. Um, no Block, and I'm trying to remember which other one um, wrote the song. Hold on. J. Fred No Block from uh, Skylar No Block and Overstreet, and Dan Tyler. Um, this is uh, 35 years ago. So you would have had to have been somebody who, um, Randy Scruggs involved in this, who was a fan of, of that music and has been a fan of that music for a long time. But it's something that would bother a lot of people right now because it harkens back to a time of Christian socialism. Richard T. Eli wrote, We have among us a class of mammon worshippers whose one test of conservatism or radicalism is the attitude one takes whether respect with respect pardon me to accumulated wealth whatever tends to preserve the wealth of the wealthy is called conservatism and whatever favors anything else no matter what they call socialism now this man said this a long time ago this man said this before i was born and he was talking about this mammon worship back then. How many have thought, well, gosh, when Donald Trump gets elected, the stock market's going to take off and go great. You mean it's going to be a bull market, just like they used to worship back in 1500 BC? Made a big statue of bull. Funny, there's a big statue of bull in front of Wall Street. Isn't that interesting? Now, it's an interesting thing that dovetails along with this. I'm sure a lot of people are still like, wait a minute, show me that picture again of Corinne Jean-Pierre. You're telling me that's a 50-year-old? You're telling me that is a 50-year-old. And you can look it up. She was born in 74. She'll be 50 this year. You want, you want a perspective on this? That'll absolutely blow your mind? Let's see if I can find the right image. I might have gotten rid of it. Hopefully I didn't. Who remembers Edith from All in the Family? Jean Stapleton, the actress. Let's see if I can bring this up here. Hold on. When this series started airing in 71... She was 48, 48, 49, and 50 the first three years. So if you remember the first three years of All in the Family, she was 48, 49, and 50 years old, respectively. Now that to me, that's just one of those very, very odd things. Here's the picture. I'm sorry. What you're looking at here is a 48-year-old, possibly 49, 50, maybe 51 years old. But this was 1971. We talked about this at the end of yesterday's video. All the magas, all the, boy, I wish we could go back to the 60s and things were so much better. This is what people looked like in their 50s. Receding hairlines, jolly, overweight, on medication, ready for retirement, ready to sit in rocking chairs and you know, die in the next 15 years, I guess. To me, it's one of those absolutely mind-boggling things that here in 2024, now this is a 50-year-old. You see, in that song, they talk about how after the turn of the century, we won't ask, another line to the song, we won't have no TV preachers to ask how much we gave. We won't need no TV preachers. You see, by then, we'll all be saved. No more fighting for a country. No child will go hungry. We'll be smiling from the cradle to the grave, which is kind of an odd thing, an odd way to end that because a lot of people were talking about, thought they were talking about, 
you know, the return of Jesus, the return of Christ, where there would be no death. But there is something very, very interesting going on. And a lot of people take me to task for the whole bikini pictures. This is Selma Hayek. She's 57. In this picture, she is almost 10 years older than Edith Bunker was. And for those of you that think I'm just, you know, wanting to show pictures of girls in bikinis, here you go. This guy's 53. This guy is 56, Guillermo Zapata. This guy is um, Eric Rutherford, I believe. 57 in this picture. Andy Wilkinson, 60. You see, age is just a number. Age is just a number. You can look like whatever you want to look like, depending on the amount of time, effort, and uh, decision-making in your life you want to put into it. 67. 67 years old. Now, given, yes, I know, Christy Brinkley has had some work done. 73. 73 years old. 25 in the picture on the right here. In the picture on the right, 25 years older than Edith Bunker. Old enough to be Edith Bunker's mom. Easily. I want you to soak that in for one minute. The picture of the person on your right, old enough to be Edith Bunker's mom. Relatively speaking, meaning 73 here. When she started the series back then, she was 48. Now, of course, age-wise, that, that woman would be far older, but you get my point. Something's very, very different in 2023 and 2024, which is the exact opposite. And here's the, here's the psychological operations craziness that ties all this together. It is the exact opposite thing the vast majority of quote-unquote truth-tellers want you to believe. They want you to believe that everybody's dying younger. They want you to believe that everybody's getting sicker younger, that, that more people, it's a mass depopulation, blah, 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 all this kind of crap. When people are actually living longer, healthier lives, and it's actually the reason Medicare and Medic it's going to go broke. Because if you retire at 65 and you live to be 90, 95, even 100, which is not uncommon, that system was not meant to be the primary financial source for somebody for the next 35 years, especially living to the standard that we live now. And, and what I really mean by that is it wasn't even meant to be the primary financial source for two people living in the modest, humble lifestyle of Archie and Edith Bunker. Look at their home versus the home the vast majority of people live in now. Average people live in now. There's virtually no amenities of any kind in this home. I mean, most people would say if somebody in their elderly years, they should have some type of an assist up and down the stairs at that age. You know, going up and down stairs, bad on your knees and all this kind of stuff. I mean, tiny, tiny place, little bitty place. And when you looked in the kitchen, I don't have that picture. They had a stove, they had a refrigerator, no microwave, not the thousand, definitely no dishwasher thousand different you know amenities we have now that we just take for granted it's an amazing contrast to see to talk about that song from such a long time ago talking about what a, a future utopia would look like and then so many years later based on what people believed in the bible they found what they thought would be a utopia places like Martinique and Barbados and those those islands in the Antilles would have seemed like utopia even though there was absolutely not one structure on the island. How the definition of what utopia is 
has changed is probably a video topic in and of itself. Imagine. Imagine right now if we could sail someplace out of the reach of fe- of governments of the world where there were just island after island after island after island with lagoons full of fish and freshwater springs and all the lumber you could ever chop down to build anything and sandy beaches and, and, and literally nobody. I mean, there are some natives they are kind of curious, but they pretty much leave us alone. Imagine finding that. And what you what you would have thought? I guess you'd have to live, you know, under the threat of one of these. But the idea that this is the image of something that was sung about by devout Pentecostals and Baptists thirty five years ago, I think probably is enough to make a lot of people scratch their heads. The idea of Christian socialism. And I'm going to read this again from Richard T. Eli from so long ago. We have among us a class of mammon worshipers whose one test of conservatism, Fox News, or radicalism, Fox News, is the attitude one takes with respect to accumulated wealth, Donald Trump. Whatever tends to preserve the wealth of the wealthy, Donald Trump, is called conservatism, Donald Trump, and whatever favors anything else, no matter what they call socialism, Fox News. Richard T. Eli. And I'll leave it there. I'm sure this will probably inspire a great deal of uh, discussion, especially the contrast between Christian socialism and national socialism or democratic socialism. And I'll leave it there. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for all of your support of the Patreon channel. Making a huge difference humbly. I cannot say thank you enough. There aren't enough words in the English language. Thank you for tolerating my singing earlier, by the way. If you'd like to join us, like I said, $1. That's it. Even less. You get a discount if you sign up for the whole year. And once again, still applies. Fully refundable, first 90 days, $5 level as well. A little handful of videos, but once again, full warning. If you're easily offended or you easily kick over into your emotions, probably watch the dollar videos first to get your mind right and then sign up for the $5. So, I'll leave it there. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for each other. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day for those of you who prefer that. Lift each other up. Most importantly, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.